Welcome, 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 everybody. It's the Inebriated Podcast. It's your host, Sam C., and your co-host. As always, J. Dat, one whole of the Soul Quest Ring Collective, coming live at you. What's going on, people? What's up? What's up? What's going on, everybody? It's another episode. Here we are in July, July 17th, I believe. Well, no, no, I'm sorry. The 13th. I'm tripping. 13th. I'm tripping. Doc. We're getting, <laughs> we're getting off on a good start. We're just coming out of Fourth of July. How was your Fourth of July, J. Dot? Man, it was horrible. I got too faded. <laughs> in fact, in fact, we got to do a twenty-one bottle cap salute. Boom. Okay. Okay. I got too faded. <laughs> What events you had going on? You, what, you hit the beach? You uh... we did uh we did the annual little barbecue thing. Like we usually used to do the beach, and then we decided, yeah, cause the the you know say the the deeper we was in in the tradition, cause we we went to the beach for about damn near four or five years straight. You know, say with the pro club beach bash that we was doing and true, shit like that. True. And, like, we started realizing this, like, man, you got to go to the beach earlier and earlier to get good parking, to get the grills and do all that stuff because everything is sanctioned. Right. It wasn't like, you know what I'm saying, before, it was like, yeah, you show up, you go wherever you at on the, on the sand, you set, you set up your own damn grill, you do your thing. And it was getting more and more, like, heavily, you know, uh, monitored. There was a lot of police everywhere, right, you know right. what I'm saying. Right, around bothering you and shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, a lot, you know what I mean? And so then we just said, you know what, fuck it. We switched it over, and then we just said, you know what, we just have a barbecue at the end of the day. Say, we fuck with you, we fuck with you, you come through. You know what I'm saying? And it is what it is. Okay. In fact, try to holler at you, you were doing your thing, you're saying it is what it is. Like, you went the commercial route for yeah, 4th yeah, of July. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we, we did something completely different out of the norm. Shout out to, well, little shout out. Damn, should I even say? Because... They looked out, but they they literally wouldn't let me take the GoPro, man. I was trying to shoot some GoPro footage for you guys. and No was, shout out. The no flies on, so okay, fuck it, no shout out. But we was downtown Miami. We was kicking at somewhere that was a waterfront restaurant, and we were having a great time. It was very populated. It was cool. It was calm, collect. They had a food truck situation to where we had like five, six different tastes of local eats around South Florida. And it was cool. We had a cool vibe, man. A bunch of people came out. Beautiful people, man. What you was growing on? What kind of local eats? They had a uh, uh, well, quesadilla, obviously, but they did it funky. They did it with like, like, uh, like was it food trucks kind of shit? Yeah, food truck kind of shit. Like it was green with green pepper peel and like onions and shit. Like it was like authentic, like food truck shit. Like, I mean, they had they had a, a, a crab and shrimp shack. They had uh, a, a pizza spot. I mean, I didn't get no pizza today, but. I mean that day, but it was it was decent. It was decent. Like I I digged it because I like it when you get a variety pack. You know what I'm saying? When you get a variety of different flavors, of different things, of different tastes of culture, like that's really what I fuck with. You know what I'm saying? That's what I really appreciate about the spot. Like surprisingly, because of how commercialized it was of a spot, they 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 brought it this time. They definitely brought it this time. And so we went from there. I mean, this is gonna be a little bit of a long story. We went from there. To another club, another uh, well, ah, daytime club, nighttime club. Really, it's actually the biggest strip club down here in South Florida. I can't give it a shout out because they don't pay me enough. But we went there. We went there at, at, at happy hour. It's a number. So we went there at happy hour. It was pretty dead. And then right there in downtown Miami, you can't miss it. It's, the, it's right I, next I, to the Yeah, I, yeah, I already know. I already know. And we went there. It was dead, but at least it was happy hour, or whatever. But there's a rooftop bar that was popping. Rooftop bar opened at seven, so it was like, boom, perfect. We catch the fireworks, we chilling, and we on the rooftop of this motherfucker. Boom, we was in, we was in, and so from there, nigga, I mean, it just ended up being a whole day. Then from there, we left, we went back to downtown Hollywood, went to Amsterdam, killed the bottle, met up with my dog that was there. Surprisingly, I didn't even know he was gonna be there. It was his birthday, so I said, fuck it. Two, three o'clock rolled around, we out to Oceans. Ocean, shout out to Ocean's Eleven, man. That I, I gotta give them. This, this is a freebie, bro. Gotta give Ocean's Eleven a shout out, bro, because they always look out for a nigga. And we always have a good time. They're never a problem, dog. And yeah, five o'clock rolled around, and we finally called it a night. Ocean Eleven, the kind of spot that I wouldn't be surprised if I see him on the next season of First Forty Eight. Facts, facts, facts. You but, I mean? but, but, it's but a good vibe. But Usually it's a, a good vibe. It's a clean vibe. Like, if, if yeah, for a yeah, dive yeah. bar, this is probably the cleanest yeah, dive you know? bar in South Florida. And I've been to a lot of dive bars. 
like dive bars and dive bars are your thing. I literally, we literally met a young lady that worked at that worked at that strip club that's open during the day. She literally was like, "Yo, I'm from Michigan. I love dive bars." I'm like, "You love dive bars?" Oh, oh, from from a. Uh... Is this the same individual from an unreleased episode that will never see the light of no, day? No, 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 no. All right. But her too, actually, that young lady too, she loves dive bars. Like, I don't know what it is about people from, from like, the northern states like Michigan, New York, you know, Maine, Boston. Like, they really love the dive bar scene. I don't really know what it is. I don't, I don't really think dive bars really exist. Oh, they exist. Up, no, up north. Well, they're just like called how, bars. No, like how, they, like how they used to. <laughs> well, no, they're like bars or pubs. You know what I'm saying? Like Irish bars. No, but I'm saying no, but I'm saying up north, like where these people are from. To me, I really well, they probably, like, well, I mean, in Chicago, they have basement bars, and then they got like second floor bars. Like you got to take a few steps to go to the bar. So do you pay per step? Like you say, oh, but I got to go up, mom. <laughs> you go down, but like, hey, you get a free shot of Johnny because you had to walk down. That would be dope. That would be dope. I mean, sometimes I mean, that's the city of Al Capone, baby, in, in Chicago. So some of them speakeasies, like it's really speakeasy. You feel me? Oh no, I believe it. I believe it. So like, I mean, it's just a different vibe. Like, I mean, I was only of the age enough to like go to like the nightclub scene and like the regular bar scene. But if I was uh, in Chicago, but if I was if I was of age at the time. I don't know them, them dive bars bro And then The thing is With Chicago It's not a 24 hour city So like Really? Their, yeah Their clubs and bars Close down at a certain time I mean obviously There's low key After hour spots Like places that Got a restaurant And then they just Stay open for like Five niggas You know what I'm saying But most spots They close at two Four No two Three Four the tops Max that I, that I try to go see I mean that's later Than Orlando Right, the whole well, city of Orlando. Yeah, yeah, it's a two hour. It's a two hour city. That's Orlando crazy. is what? Uh, one one a.m. or two? One a.m. to it's two. One, a. one to two. It depends. It's it depends. somewhere. I haven't been to Orlando Night a very clubs, long I think time. It's two. I think bars are one a.m. The last time I went to Orlando was um was when uh Miramar High. You know, what I'm saying shout out Miramar East Miramar. You know, what I'm saying shout out Miramar High School when they won the uh, nationals. We went out there For and, football, and was, yeah. yeah, you know, what I'm saying it was a, it was a dog. And we went out there, boom, and then we just, you know, we, we just went to the club just because, like, ah, let, let's just see what's going on. We already hit And it right. was the nicest, bro, the nicest bouncer I've ever met in my life. Really? This motherfucker had to been like seven foot twelve. <laughs> All right. His dreads were longer than me. Bob, everything cool. Like, we just in that shit. Motherfucker walks up. While we already inside, like, excuse me. You cannot smoke inside of this area. However, there's a door right over there. Bro, you go up there and you can smoke up there. I said, "Oh my God! All right, oh my bad. All right, really? Cool. Yeah, I walk, I right. walk right. Up, you know what I'm saying? There were like a little stairs, you know, for for, for the he rooftop. He tapped you or he hit you on the no, shoulder? No, no, like, no, 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 no. Like, they were like, "Excuse me, sir." It was an excuse tap, me, right. sir. It was an excuse me, sir. Oh shit! But I went outside, and now like I know where he reported me to. He reported me to the area where everybody else was at. Right. But I said, eh, hey, I just want to smoke this on this other section. Right. So I went to the other section. I kept smoking. Motherfucker walked upstairs. Was like, excuse me, sir. This area is off limits. If you could please come on. Like I said, he's, he's seven foot 12. Right, right, right. And this is your second warning. My personal second warning, but literally three because like we already had to check my little homie. He's uh, locked up right now. We had to check my little homie because he was doing some other shit in the bar. Right. And you know, but I was just like, oh my, like you never seen over here. Like, I, like Orlando was very nice. It okay. was very nice All and right. hospitable. So All that's right. why I asked. You know, what time they close? Yeah, because I think, I think it's a one or two o'clock. Because uh, from the stereotype, ain't nothing hospital about Chicago, and I and I oh, got the yeah. fit it on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Big Cubs fan. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no. Especially, I mean, the the late night after eats. Oh my god, mm-hmm. bro, you ain't never had. Got a light skin friend, look like salmon salsa. <laughs> dark skin friend, look like salmon salsa. Shout out to the Bears. Shout out to the Bears. Shout out to the White Sox, man. That's what's up. Like I said, everybody but the Cubs, dog. Right? It's huh? in it's in your blood. And that shot out the Cubs, no, huh? No, 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 I got to, I got to, I got it's to. It's in your blood. See, Chicago motherfuckers, when they hate something, they hate something. <laughs> it's in your blood and not shut out the Cubs. Um, No, we were actually talking about the Cubs earlier. What was it that we were going back and forth about Babe Ruth and the, the uh, Red Sox? And then I had mixed up, I had mixed oh, up the team oh, with the Cubs. No, about what's it called? 
about how Babe Ruth was a uh, he was a Hall of Fame pitcher back in his day, dog. Right, right, like right. Before, you know, when he got like brought up to the major league, he was a Hall of Fame pitcher. Yeah, a lot of and, people wouldn't know that because they only know him for the, his home runs. You're know saying for being on the Yankees right. and stuff like that. Yeah, but like when he was with the uh, Red Sox, and you know, saying to this day, his record still stands: most scoreless innings in the World Series. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why that curse. The Red Sox curse came about, and I remember when the Red Sox broke that curse. It was like '04 or something like that. I All remember. Right. I remember. I went to sleep. The game was on. It was the Red Sox and the Yankees. Yes, I took a nap, bro. I woke up. The game was still on. Like it was one of the longest games in the history of baseball. On top of that, right? But I, they ended up winning. Down, you know, say they ended up winning, bomb, and then they ended up winning the World Series and stuff like that. But um, because we talked about uh, um, the uh, the Chicago White Sox scandal. And how, you know, saying Shoeless Joe Jackson and motherfuckers threw the game. Like, I don't even remember how that came about. But that's what we talked about. Right, right. So that's oh, yeah. what you brought up. But but that's what we talked about. I remember that much. Yeah, because we were trying to go over the records and, like, how significant Chicago mm. has been. And then them just winning the World Series. That's why he's got his official Chicago Cubs. 2016 World Series champion. Boom. Like, you know, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, long overdue. Because you brought up something about the GOAT. You thought the goal was about Red Sox, but That's the goal was, was really, really for for Chicago. That's what it was. You know, allegedly, I mean, everybody got their superstitions and shit like that. Right, 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 right. No, but, it, it's, but it's crazy you know, that even shit like that is. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's how old baseball is. Right. If right. you think about it from that perspective, where they really think, oh, because a guy that owned the goat got kicked out of a stadium, that's the reason why the Cubs didn't win. Right. It's, and it's then you see stadium. what happened, like when the Marlins won. Uh, the last time the Marlins won, that you know, the fence. You know, they uh, Steve Bartman. <laughs> Steve fucking Barman And you look at that Be like dog What the hell Over Monse Alo Monse Alo A.K.A. My dog Pee Pee Hands <laughs> There's a reason He didn't wear gloves He didn't wear gloves Because before every at bat He pissed on his hands Really? Because it removed calluses And he said It helped him Grip the bat better He just oh, peed on his hands no. Straight up Straight up How did he even time it? Like, look at, look at Mose Alo hey. <laughs> hey bro Look at Mose Alo dog. Look at every single time He played a game I He ain't never wear no gloves I He mean, never wore no better gloves Really? He, his entire life Remember Mose Alo won With the Marlins he he won he, he won a chip with the Marlins really? in 1997. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, Mosé. Oh, hello, come on. Hey. No, I, I really. Mosé, hello, Dominicano, man. As, La, as Latino that I am, I do not keep up with baseball. I'm sorry, my people. I just don't. It's not my thing. It's not my sport. It's just hmm. it takes too fucking long. To don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. I don't keep up with baseball now. Like I'm like a baseball historian. Right. Because I love the game. I've I've always loved the game. You know what I'm saying? It's just I didn't have the nerves for it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, on some real shit, Jose, when a game don't count, when it was practice, when it, when it was a scrimmage, when it was, you know what I'm so, saying? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, even a game that never counted, like, it don't mean shit for the record. Scrimmage, yeah. You looking at me, I'm the best defensive motherfucker out. Point blank, period. Now, when it, when it comes when it comes to crunch time, like, bro, like, I'm Stays making... No, yo, yo, no, 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 the opposite. Like, dog, like, it'll be some shit, like, it'll be a bang, bang play, like, something crazy. And I'll make the catch. Like, it'll be somewhere. I got to do a cartwheel and a split and then grab it. And I'm grabbing it. <laughs> but then when the kid's trying to throw it, my nerves. And I just be gooped, dog. I be uh, gooping. Okay, I'll be fucking okay. up. No, that, see, that I, admit, I admit that. Right. I admit that. Some people ain't built for the big lights. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Facts. And, and I, ironically, you speak about that. And sorry because our transitions are horrible, but I mean, I love them. Fuck it. Because it all, it all interchanges. Ironically, you say that because last Tuesday, we. Went to a karaoke bar, and this is a very prevalent karaoke bar. I guess now this this was usually an old school spot. If you ever been in South Florida, you ever been to Broward specifically, you know about this spot. It's right off. It's right in Pembroke Pines. It's a, it's a nightclub. It's been here forever. Your mama know who, where it is. Your oh, dad know where it is. Your, oh, your daddy might have picked up your mama there. Just letting you know. Oh, and we went there. And it was a karaoke night. And usually this spot doesn't have karaoke. So I, went I never from, knew. I went for my first time. And to go check it out, bro, the room in the place was packed. I mean, we had to get reservation tickets. That's how packed this motherfucker was. Like, when we pulled For up, karaoke. For karaoke. That's why I knew it was serious. Well, so, 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 like, how do you know who's up next? You got well, numbers? Not, well, yeah. You had to pre, uh, you had to pre reserve your spot. And. Um, the, just the line, like it was crazy. So 
usually all the performers uh, had to get reserved tickets. Like, we got reserved tickets even though we didn't perform. We got reserved tickets anyway because it was reserved tickets before a certain time. He, he a shy guy. No, actually, let me speak on that. That's actually not true. So, we went. We had a great time. Bro, the house was packed. This place can fit easily 2,000 people. It was probably 1,500 people in there. Actually, a great performer, Jacquees, actually showed up. Shout out to him because, you know, not not being a neighborhood cat, he, sh- he showed up. He did a little performance. He showed mad love. So shout out to you, my brother, man. You know, I, I'm a little bit of a fan of your work. I'm not a complete fan. I fuck with some of your work, but I can't say that I'm a full fan. So, but com- congrats to you, man. Shout out to you, bro. You, you showed up for the crib. You know what I'm saying? And especially for everybody, like, it was free entry. Free entry or, like, $10 to get in. So, like... Even for uh, an event like that to show up at such a low cost, low fee, like that's what's up. I mean, we did buy a bottle. Did anybody get shot? Nobody got shot from my from my preference, like like from my peripheral. Nobody got shot. Then it's a beautiful thing well, because I, well, I know where it's located, and if nobody got shot, it's a beautiful thing. Facts, facts, facts. And you know, we we actually went boom, caught the bottle. Had a good time, and they were starting to run out of performers. And I was like, oh shit, you better run out of performers. I'm so drunk, nigga, I'm like, because they're doing R&B, which is cool. You know what I'm saying? That was the vibe. The vibe was R&B all night. So, boom, we in there. Everybody's singing R&B. Somebody sung Casey and JoJo. Uh, you know, there's, there's a video. You can look it up right now. Pembroke Pines. It has to do with uh, a reptil, a reptilian uh, animal. Well, just to let the people know, I can't give, I can't give it for free, dog. I can't Why? give it for free. I can't give it for free, dog. They gotta, pay, no, they reptilian. gotta pay me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you can look this up right now. It's, it's a, it's an older white dude, bro. Older white dude came up in St. Prince, man. It was dope, dope as fuck. What Prince on? Prince got like a thousand. Don't have- Hey, to turn it on. <laughs> hey, I didn't think he was gonna pull off the voice. I'm probably not pulling off the voice from y'all perspective, but this nigga pulled off the voice, no problem. I mean, you close. I mean, motherfuck- close. motherfuckers went up there. You have a very high pitched voice. <laughs> well, You're close. Prince, I mean, <laughs> Prince, I, love it. I could be your son right now, nigga. Yeah, you but, ain't Pr- but Prince is like five one. Right. Well, I mean. You know, my mom a little tall. My granddaddy was a little tall. You feel me? Could have been on my daddy's. On my, on my mama daddy's side, but besides that, all right. Besides that point, we we had the we had the karaoke bar. They started running out of performance, and I'm like, I'm getting sauced up, or whatever. Confidence boosted, but I didn't even look around the room, dog. That's how packed it was. Like, like homeboy, you know, the, they had an MC, so the MC came out. Hey, hey, y'all having a good time? Da da da. Anybody want to come and perform? Come up right now, come and address me backstage, I'll get you on. And I'm like, man, I'm like, I'm saucy right now. And you dog. scary. You you ain't holler at the MC like No, hey, I, I did, go no, I did. So he was pointing out to the crowd and I'm and I'm second row. So I'm like, man, you know what? I got a song in my head that'll match the R and B vibe in here, but I don't know if it was gonna fly, and I'm gonna tell you exactly what it was in a second. So you know, they bouncing around the dog at before, like as he's talking to me, like he's like, "Yo, you want to come up? You want to come up?" I'm like, "Yo, I'll come up." You know what I'm saying? He's like, "What song you want to sing?" I can't lie. This is the what, this, what did you want to sing? The song that came out of my head because it was a, a it was like a deep black R and B vibe. It, no, no, it, it, it. It was in the vibe. You was feeling it. You said you were drunk. You were feeling right. good. So like, if it came out, that's because that's what you were feeling was the vibe. Right. What song was it? Because he explained it too much. That means you already know it's going to be some shit. It's going to be some shit. Sh- Literally, it that's in the song. Contagious by Ron Isley. And R. Touch Kelly. Touch me, baby. Yes. <laughs> and a man said, if we want you, girl. <laughs> I swear hey, that was my. I love, that hey, was, I love me some Ronda Wisely. I love don't me some know. Wisely, bro. Mr. Biggs, they don't know about Mr. Biggs. The Mr. Biggs before the Mr. Cheeks. You understand what I'm saying? See, like, like, like what people don't realize is. Like, go back and do your research, and you're going to see the old album covers of the Isley Brothers, and you're going to be laughing, because you're going to see a lot of dudes, it's going to be a lot of polyester, spandex, Facts. and shit like that, a lot of bell bottoms, Facts. a lot of feathers and shit like that, but never forget, behind them feathers, motherfucker probably got 
a nice, a nice revolver like the Isley Brothers was on their thing. At the same time, delivering amazing shit such as Footsteps in the Dark. Time An amazing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and and, and these are just records for the hip hop community. Because me personally, oh, I love karaoke night. Okay. See, but I've never been to that spot, to the reptilian location, right. the cold blooded location, such in as Pines. located over there. Facts. Just a little west of the turnpike. Right. Uh, but however, I go to the, I don't give a fuck. The Gulf Stream got very good karaoke. Right, right, right. Pop karaoke. Because, you know what I'm saying? I remember. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, you was out there with yeah, your yeah, 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 Darling, I'm telling you, I was out there, man. I love karaoke. Another little karaoke spot I like, but this is a hole in the wall. This right off of there, off 79th. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a little Brazilian joint. Um, I don't even know if it's still there. It's been a minute. Could be, uh, could be Boteco not. or Boteca. I forgot the name of it, but it's, it's something like that. Boteca, Boteca. okay, I remember that. It got, right. it got the round shit. Like, you got a round logo, like an Aztec logo? No, it's like a square, and it just said Bottega. It said Bottega, and they got, like, some in the middle of me. I don't know what it got. Yeah, but it's a, it's a little Brazilian spot. And I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've been out there and stuff like that. But I enjoy, I really like karaoke. Right. Like, I really no, like and karaoke. And I was ready to get up, but, dog, I look like... Like, after, y'all hear my voice, and y'all hear his voice. After y'all the- know <laughs> I like karaoke. No, so look. You're look, a little shy. No, bro, you would have you would have shit your pants, like... Bruh, I we went up, we went up. Hold on, hold on. Hey, we, hey, put the beat on. I told, I told a man, yo, what's up? He's like, hey, what you want, what you want, what you want to sing? I'm like, yo, I will sing Contagious because this is the vibe I was feeling at the time. It sounded like the tempo of the room, so I wanted to match the room. So I told him Contagious. He okay, was so like, it, was, it was a lot of shows out there. Oh okay. my god, I would have shut it down. You feel me? Okay. And so, especially for, you know, I'm a big dude now, so fuck it. You know, I gotta do something. For the ladies, you feel me? And I was right about to go on stage, but then the night kept on and Jacquees walked in and he was like, man, we ain't got enough time. We're going to fit you in for next week. Jacquees is here. You are, you know what I'm saying? I got. I, I, mean, got he, I mean, he was just trying to be nice. At the end of the day, you ain't get fit in no way. Hey, man, Jacquees here. You already know what time. Right, you already know what time. Like, people know what right, time. Right, right, right. You no, I'm going to keep it real with myself, of people, course. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know a, whole, a whole celebrity walked in. Like, I'm not trying to jump on the mic after him. Because he's going to do his thing. But know? I'm going to ask you a question. Because the way you... Oh, a whole silly thing. I'm going I'm, I'm to ask you a question. A okay. serious question. Like, serious I ain't playing. I ain't playing. I ain't playing. What Jacquee song has been on the radio? Um, well, he did... I know you want to fuck. I know you want to chill. What you mean? Baby, oh, no, 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 no. I know you want to see. No, no, but I heard that shit when I was a G. Right. And well, he ain't he, even that old. Right. He ain't he, even that old. He, no, he, no, he, but I'm asking this. What song... Has been on the radio. No, he's had some hits. That's I, been on the radio. Like I told you, I'm half a fan, bro. I can't. No, because I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Yeah, no, he's I know on the radio. The gener- I know we're in the generation yeah. where it's like Covers. a lot of this happens. No, but a lot of it happens due to streaming and stuff like that. Right. So it's it's a little different now. Like in the same aspect where like uh, Freddie Gibbs with Bandana. Because I, I've been a Freddie Gibbs fan for a minute, and I remember Freddie Gibbs saying, like, when he drops Bandana, that's his last album, he done a rap. And then when I see that Bandana dropping, I see he signed a major label deal. So I know if you just signed a major label deal to do this album, that ain't going to be your last album, because right. now you're in the contract. Yeah, at least two, three albums. Like, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. But he's on it. So it's like, I understand. So that's why I'm just asking, because honestly, like, Maybe that I've was- seen him, and I've seen him through Vine, and I've seen him through, like, the online shit. Right. And I haven't seen him in a positive light. It's always been on a like a slapstick kind of light because I I remember the meme of him online talk about some how your car be when you're trying to t- turn it on but the starter ain't working and it's just a video of of Jacquees in replay in a loop going so I, mean, I don't know anything good about it. Right, right, right. And, no, and, and that's what I'm trying to... I'm that's gonna, what I'm asking. I'm I ain't trying to, no, I ain't trying trying to, to throw shade. Him, I know. I'm trying to give him some light. And like I said, I'm, I'm half a fan. I'm not checking for him. No, no, I'm not listening to his latest song. But from the work I have seen, which is a lot of cover work. I, have, I can't lie. It is okay. a lot of cover okay. work. So he is like basically giving the R and B vibe a revamp of a 2019 flow. Because he's, like he's one of those rappers turned singing niggas. But he does have a tone. Maybe not a preferable tone. Oh, like Usher, all right. So you see what I'm saying? So he's not even a singer then. When you put it in that perspective, he a rabbit turned singer type. Right. So that right there showed me he ain't in the room. Sing, though. See, like, I can't, we can't, knock, we can't knock every performer. 
no, no. And rap and sing. No, but that ain't even what I'm asking. You talk about something else right now. That ain't even what I'm asking. Okay, go ahead. So can he sing is my question. In my opinion, not not my preference, but the man can get down as far as hitting no, no, no. Can, he, can he sing? Can he sing? That, it's, it's, it's opinionated, uh, bro. No, 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 no. Can and it ain't no opinion. Can Fantasia sing to you? Fantasia can sing. In my opinion, I did not... I All right, so what? Okay, so whatever. Style. Whitney Houston can sing. There's no debate about it. Okay. Ain't, ain't nobody gonna debate about right. this shit. There's certain people. Ain't nobody gonna debate. Keisha Cole can sing. Ain't no debate about right. it. Right, but okay, hold on. Mary J. Let's Blige can it. sing. Ain't no okay. debate about it. There's certain can shit Missy that ain't Elliott got no debate. Sing. But she was never singing. But she has sung background music and vocals. But that, that's artists. why I'm asking you. That's why I'm asking you. I'm asking you questions. So, so you call it? So I can answer yours. So you call it Jacquees Missy Elliott of male R and B slash. Hip hop rap, yes. All I heard was yes. Do you understand what uh, I'm saying? Right, but you have to understand the category I'm putting them in. I'm putting no, them but in that's the problem. Category. Why do we got to put singers in that category? Because Chris Brown has done rap songs. But like Chris, Chris, no, Chris Brown can sing. I'm not asking if he can sing. I'm talking about I'm telling now, you can he can sing. rap. No, he can't rap. Of course he can rap. No, he can't rap. You obviously have never heard his rapping work. No, no, I have. No, he can't rap. Okay. I hold rap to a different standard. Can no, he rap? can't rap. Like as a rapper, rapper, rap. No, Put no. lyrics down where he's. I mean, anybody can rap no, no, if no, you no, want to no, go no, in no, that no, perspective. No, no. Can I'm talking about rap, rap, dog, I, dog. I view, I view rap differently than most people view rap. I love rap. Okay, but I love you rap. Can't consider everything Eric B and Rakim. You gotta no, 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 no. Cool J's of the world actually created what we call hip hop. Oh, okay, okay, and I understand. No, yeah, and I understand that. Hold on, and I understand that. And that is the biggest problem. We want to view rap as like the only time you count is when you sell. Dog, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there wouldn't be no LL Cool J without uh, an Eric B and Rock Crazy. They, they wouldn't crazy. be. No, they crazy. wouldn't be. They wouldn't be. They're crazy. They're they the wouldn't same generation. Be. Right? They're, you know, so without a grand mass of flash. There won't be an LL Cool J. You can say that. You know what I'm saying? But you're not saying that. You're saying Eric B and Rock Kim. Eric B and Rock Kim were just in a different lane completely of what LL Cool J was doing in the 70s. You have to understand. Not, not in the 70s. LL Cool J was never in the 70s. LL Cool J wasn't in the 70s. LL Cool J? Bro. It's never in the 70s. What I go on my room? <laughs> because I stand in the wall and in the right. back of my mind, I, I hear a conscious call. I need Tell love. Me like a girl as sweet as a dove. If there was no Elo Cool J, there'd never be Heavy I D and the Boys. Love. I need love. No Elo Cool J, no Heavy D and the Boys. And Heavy D and the, heavy D and and the like Boys. Mas- and like Master P said, I need dubs. Right. <laughs> 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 I remember that. Shout out to that. Shout out to no, that. No, no, but at the end of the day, no, what I'm saying is, because that's what gets me upset. What gets me upset is the fact that hip hop. Is not allowed to hold a standard. Hip hop is the only genre where, like, the old shit, though, no, like, we're still comparing rappers to motherfuckers that literally died 20 years ago. Yo, Biggie died in, in 19, not, not even 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago, brother. More than 20 years ago. Right. And, and that gets me upset because why, because why is it that, that we keeping dudes off the radio and shit like that? Because we ain't got control over the shit. Right. I lo- nigga, I love hip hop. I love hip hop, you know, like everybody else. I love hip hop. I love hip hop. Ain't no doubt about right, it. Right, but see. Ain't no doubt about it. See, when, so, you, when you get a mixture of artists, and, I, and, and I, I can let you rock, but. No, 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 no. Okay, no, continue. When you get a mixture of artists, like they say LL Cool J. What do you mean a mixture of artists? What does where, that mean? Where he blends the fine line of what rap and R&B is. Because nah. let's say an artist he was like never Missy Elliott. Hold on, nigga. He was never singing. Okay. Because I Need Love, and what's the other was one? It, was he singing? Yes, nigga. Even though he's rapping, it's smooth. He wasn't singing. Oh my god. And, okay, all right, all right, all right. So scratch that little cool J. All right, all right. Who who else uh finessed the line? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. It's T Pain for sure. He created the, like a new line in the two thousands. See, but um, T Pain wouldn't exist without a person like Ja Rule. No, no, because now I'm looking at No, this Ja Rule. John Rue wasn't singing though. No, he was. He was no, he, no, he was singing. No, he was literally man. singing. Are you telling me leave me alone? He was singing. No, that's not singing, bro. Just because you're holding a note does not mean you're singing. Like I told you, 80, 85, by the way. 85 was uh, Ella Cool. I need love? No, 85 was when, uh, when his first album came out, Radio. Okay. All right. I can't live without my radio. Okay, okay. 
Yeah. See, like, I, no, but that, but that, look, what I'm saying is. All right, so I gotta take a shot for that. Hold on. Of I course. What I'm saying is, hold on, Bob. God bless and bless God. Bless. Now, the only, the, that's the only question I got. Why is it that we're not allowed to hold rap to a higher standard? Rap only has one radio station in most major cities. Yes. Compared to, like, things like rock and all that new shit. Yes. Where they're playing all the old hits. You can't play. When you play, like, classic or old rap records, like, you're looking at, like, the motherfucker looking at you like, oh, damn, duck ass motherfucker, he over here, like, blah, blah, blah. Right. For some reason. You cannot, you cannot show love no more. And that's the problem. Like, that's why I enjoyed listening to a motherfucker like Sean Price. Sean Price was never on the radio. He was never going to be on the radio. But guess what? That's Sean Price. Sean Price was over there hitting with some shit. You know what I'm saying? He talking about, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he over there demolishing the shit, and he's right. rapping nice. Right. Like, I'm over here trying to think about it. As soon as I'm trying to think of one of his bars, like, bro, like, automatically you forget it. You know what I'm, I'm trying, man. I'm trying to come up with. Is it, well, yo, no, okay. You, you want you, you, you right want now. you want to hear some goddamn bars? Just listen to the entire Monkey Bars album. Like that motherfucker was just going crazy on the entire album. It wasn't nothing, was a none. You know what I'm saying? Right. Trying to be on the radio and all like that. But then also at the same time, to me, the greatest rapper living. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? To me, the greatest rapper living is Jay Z. Point blank period. But to me, the greatest rapper of all time is Biggie. But y'all, but you are up north cat. Like no, no, we don't, like it don't matter. We, 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 we talking about all that shit. But regardless of the Chicago Cubs, that you are up north cat. Like I, I was up north for a while, but dog, the Biggie niggas is always gonna be Biggie niggas, and I understand. But my favorite rapper, but my favorite rapper of all time is Tupac. Yeah, but. Well, That's you can't what I'm saying. Your favorite and the best next to each other because you have to understand that there is a no, no. But I'm trying to show you because there's a complete difference in their style. And that's what I'm trying there's to say. There's a complete difference in style. But my favorite is Pop. To me, Pop was always my favorite since I was a jit. Always my favorite. You know what I'm saying? Like the first, the first album I ever heard as a jit. You know what I'm saying? Was motherfucking Master P Ghetto Dope. Right. That was the first album my old boy bought me because my old boy was a big Master P fan. Right. You know what I'm saying? So all I was all I was listening to when I was a little jit was fucking Captain Kirk. Can you save me, <laughs> Captain Kirk? I want to have your baby. Like I'm listening to that shit. You know what I'm saying? I remember when he flipped the Michael Jackson track when he did. Uh, uh, I always feel like. Somebody's watching me. Hey, my, that is probably one of my oldest favorite Master P flips that he did. Because he did a bunch of flips. I mean, he did Pass Me the Green. Um, he did... Uh, I need dubs. Right. I need dubs. You know what I'm saying? He did a bunch of flips, but that was probably my favorite. I'm going to know... Hey, that, that shit was my shit, though. That shit was my shit. But that, that's not a loose topic because of course, I, of course, I know you want to talk about your favorite rapper and the best rapper, but my topic solely was excuse me. about singing. We got here because of singing. who can rap and sing, and who is the best at it. I'm not saying T Pain is the best at it. I'm just saying that he is. I mean, rap and sing. That's what I'm saying. You want to throw Ja Rule in there because he can hold a deep. No, 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 what I'm saying, mainstream, no, mainstream wise, he was the one that brought that singing shit over. Mainstream wise, not really. It was way before I'm LL Cool J, nigga. That's what I'm saying. Like, and he's the only one I'm getting off the top right now because I don't know how many other rappers did R&B songs. I mean, not saying like, okay, not like just rapping over an R&B song like Nas or whatever with "I Rule the World." Like, shit, I would say honestly, scratch all that bullshit. Lauren Hill is the best. Rap singer known to man, and if you don't understand that, I don't think you understand. You ain't never seen her live. I have never seen her live. I, I've seen her live, and, and you say and, she's and, terrible. And I can guarantee, I can bet you your bottom dollar. I can bet you all your bread. I can bet you everything you got, and I'm gonna take everything off your hands. She's terrible. She is the worst singer I've ever seen. No in way. I'm, I'm telling you straight up. So, so you think all that is auto tune back then? No, 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 or it, no, it, no, no. It, it wasn't that it was auto tune. That was probably the longest recording session <laughs> ever. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna right. tell, tell you straight up. I was an engineer for a very long time. Okay, that yeah. was probably the longest session, and Wyclef Jean would just say, "Oh, oh, oh," and he was like, "Oh, Proz, no. hold on, Proz did most of the production. Wyclef, okay, let me scratch that. Proz made the beats. Wyclef did the production as far as." 
making it a monumental track. Would you say that? Because Pras has, oh, oh, has a lot There's only one thing I'm going to say. There's only one thing I'm going to say. I've seen it live, and dog, I was highly upset when I saw it live. Really? I was highly I upset. I am shocked. I am completely shocked by this, because Lauryn Hill, I mean, I grew up like... No, I, I love my I mom, love it. My mom's favorite song is uh, My World is Zion. Like, you know, it, Lauren Hill, Miss Education of Lauren Hill is still highly acclaimed to probably be one of the best hip hop albums of all time. You can exclude you can't exclude it out of rap and you can't exclude it out of R and B. It's in its own category of hip hop, because that is true hip hop. And I would say that she set the tone for all I mean all artists. From you know, from the '90s up until now, Lauryn Hill. God bless you, Lauryn Hill. You have been my, the soundtrack to my world, shit. Yeah, but you got to tie the fuck up. Go ahead. I'm telling you, dog. I just seen it in real life. All right, well, maybe life. look. She done probably smoked enough weed with the Marley Brothers to be like, all right, I can't sing no more. My shit fucked up. I'm, I'm not. I'm not here to get dog. At the end of the day, look. That, that's why people consider me an asshole. Like in, in my real life. Um, in my real life occurrences with humans, right. people consider me an asshole. I don't know why. I think I'm the cheeriest motherfucker you ever go meet. But to me, it's real simple. I don't give a fuck about excuses. Right. At all. Like, I give a fuck about, like, hey, yes or no. Like, it's real simple. Hey, you got to do this. Yes or no. Right. And then you're, you're like, no, well, well, I mean, well, well, I mean, well, 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 well. Hey, no, no, it's, it's, but it's a real simple answer. I is it yes or no? When you're giving me all them well, well, wells, you're trying to butter me up to right. tell me no. Right. Is what I don't want to hear this shit. Tell me yes or no. And then I'm going to be the one to ask you, okay, well, why? And then you can tell me straight up. And guess what? And guess what? At the end of the day, no, no, no. Life is real simple. But people never want to hear this. People never want to hear this. You want to know how, how simple life is? When you tell a motherfucker the reason, all a motherfucker is going to tell you is like, well, this is how well, I Well, listen. This had to be done. You didn't do this because you said you did this. Guess what? You fucking failed. Ain't no participation trophies in real life. life dog. Your life is real simple, dog. And people want to look at you like an asshole for holding people accountable. Ain't no time for none of that shit. And it's real simple. I went to the concert. It was a Wiz Khalifa concert at the University of Miami. Okay. That was high as hell. I met one of, one of my closest friends that I ever met in life. I met at that concert. My dog McLovin. We, we call him McLovin. Right, right, right. I see but I, we, 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 we was out there. I, I was I was high. Like I said, Wiz Khalif concert. High to the motherfucker. I snuck in mad junior bacon cheeseburgers. You know what I'm saying? Praise dude. You know what I'm saying? I don't need none of that shit no, no more. Bacon, yeah. But no, back in them I, days, back in them days, it was beef. different. So I, I go over there and that motherfucker, Bram. And I like, but even after all the splits, bomb motherfuckers high as hell. I'm just like, damn, I just got mad junior bacons. <laughs> so like, I just sat a person in front of me. I said, hey, excuse me. I go, look, I got mad extra junior bacon cheeseburgers. Like, I ain't gonna eat it. Like, would you like to eat it? And she was just like, shit, yeah, I appreciate it. And a homegirl was like, nah, fuck that. I don't know you. Fuck you. And I was just like, well, I right. Then I guess I'll eat it later. Then okay, whatever. I don't care. Right. It's gonna be cold. But, but the crazy part is, she knew that she knew that the the bit that was wilding out. She knew her for years, and she decided to end her friendship at that point because she was just like, "Damn, do I really want to be friends with somebody who will treat a stranger in, in that kind of manner?" Like it's like, like, like they didn't try, they never tried nothing perverted or nothing like that, nothing creepy. Like, right, no, like it, it was literally motherfucker saying, "Hey, excuse me, like, hey, I got too much." Because I already asked everybody else around her. Everybody else already snuck food in. Right. I was like, "Shit, did the last people love? Hey, man, you want a G burger? Whatever, whatever." Right, let but, me know. <laughs> and and that and, and that began a a, a lifelong friendship, yeah. and and I, and I'm still cool with her to this day. A That's very good right. human being. And that what I'm saying, dog. Like I went out there, bro. Lauren Hill come out. After being at least two and a half hours late. Right, right. At least two and a half hours late. So she come out. The first thing that pissed me off is she ain't even performing over the original instruments. Because later you find out, a.k.a. a couple years ago, you find out that she was withholding payments from the real producers from the tracks. She wasn't even paying them from the miseducation alone here. And they did a complete lawsuit. So whenever she does a live presentation, it has to she be a different beats? It has to be from her own album. Has to be different. Because like she's just a shitty person 
Okay. Period. In terms of business. Right, in right, terms right. of business. Well, I ain't talking about her. That's why she hasn't been in business in 20 years. So hold I on. Understand hold on. Hold on. Because like, like, I'm, I'm trying to clear myself because it sounds like I'm just a Lauren Hill hater. But I want to I, I want to let right. motherfucker know. All the, you know, I didn't know at that time, like, damn, like, why are these beats different? Like, I love this song, but why the beats different? Right. And on top of that, no, you, you, bitch already came two and a half hours late. And now you're singing, you're singing off beat, you're singing off tune, off you're beat. singing crazy, every, everything. So I'm just over here like, dog, like, the shit was so bad, I was becoming sober type shit. I'm just like, dog. Right, you were, you were affected, and, and, right? you know and, 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 you could, and you couldn't sing the hits and you couldn't do this and that. When shit like that happens, when, 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 you're a, when you're a big artist, my dude, I, I, I'd have been in the industry, when you're a big artist and you done done all that shit, and you know this shit that was on the radio and this and that. If you can't even perform that shit in a little ass spot like the University of Miami, right. there's something going on. There's a reason why stuff's not being cleared. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's because of you. Because at the end of the day, people don't realize, especially the younger people, and that's what I want to like instill when y'all motherfuckers that want to listen to this shit and be like, oh, well, these motherfuckers just fed it. Like, no, no, no. Like, at the end of the day, like, as loose as I look and as wide as I be acting, but when it comes to business, I'm a motherfucking businessman. I will show up in a goddamn three-piece suit with the vest on, with the tie on, because business is business. And that's what the younger generation don't realize. When it comes to business, my dude, I'll scrape business. Right. And that's the thing. If you can't clear certain shit, that's straight off of your no business. Right. That's straight off of your business. Yeah. And then you start seeing, and then you start reading all these other stories, and then you realize, like, oh, well, damn. It must be true. That, that got to be the problem. Right. Because, no, I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. She could have performed none of the hits. That, you know, she could have performed in Five Road. Right. Right. Oh she could have performed that motherfucking, how you going to win if you ain't right, right with me? Oh say, she could have, she couldn't have performed fucking, you know what I'm saying? You might have won one, but you, you know what I'm saying? But you just lost one. Right. You know what I'm saying? Whatever, however the fucking went, I'm a little, I'm a little drunk right now. I apologize. But you see what I'm saying? No, no, I hear you. I hear you. You, you couldn't and do I it. I didn't know that. That's crazy. And, it's and, like, and that got me, that got me right away. It's because like, and, and I know you fully just explained it right now, but it's like, how could you owe Pras? How could you owe White Clef? Like, no, no, but not even. That's the thing. The, pe- these, the people that you actually owe distribution companies, you owe Sony, you owe no, Columbia, no, no, like not even. Like you, you owe the actual people who's like, 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 what do you think is going on? Like, really behind the scenes? No, no, what do you think is going on? You think Pras is behind the goddamn scenes, I, I literally playing you. instruments? Is that what you really think? Well, no, hold on, hold on. Because I'm, t- I'm gonna tell you what really happens. White Clef, hold on. White Clef actually plays music. No, no, I, no. Of course, so does Mark Anthony. Right. Do you think that he's playing every single instrument? No, I think Pras is filling in the blanks with the hi hats and you know. Completely <laughs> Oh, you think they both literally did it? Dog, that ain't have a go, bro. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not a musical genius. I'm no, that ain't have a go. In the industry, so you gotta excuse me. But go ahead. Explain no, no, it for the because that, because that ain't because it's real simple. What you do is you sign a very specific contract. This, the the contract is like I'm gonna pay you for your one time for your one time. Use. You, you know what I'm saying? But I'm for but There you go. So you play your shit, bro. Hey, nah, nah, nah. We do it. We do. It. Oh, okay, bro. I like it. We got Bye. it. Yeah, that one time fee. It doesn't matter if I sell a billion records. You don't get one percentage point off of anything. Like, you got signed on. You signed a contract. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, you agreed to play whatever the fuck it is that you played for X amount of money. That's the way it works in the music industry. Okay. Point blank, period. Science to you guys. Anybody that's looking to get into the music industry, yeah. this is science. Right? Read the goddamn fucking contracts because they going to rape, you know what I'm saying? For I'm lack of a better word, I apologize. For lack of a better word, they're going to get you. They're going to take you. There you go. Instead of, instead of the R word, we can take you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. 2019. You know what I'm saying I'm trying to be. You know what I mean? No, no. But that's exact. No, but that's exactly how it no, works. I'm thinking and, and that's that, the worst part. But no, because that's the worst part about it. Because at the end of the day, they, like, they co-produced with somebody that already had a similar beat. So no, no, no. Oh no, not that at all. It, it could, it could literally be like, yo, you got. Because this, this is the way it works. The way it works okay, is the way it works in, in terms of the producer, and, and, and you're the big name producer. I'm, the I'm way mad. the way it works is like literally we'll be in the we'll be in the booth and literally I'll be like boom 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 I can't play piano right. you can't play piano but you're the big name and 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 I'm like your cosign so I'm just like shit but I, oh you know what I know somebody who can't play 
But bring them in. Right. Hey, sign this real quick. This but NDA, they sign it. Right. No, no, not an NDA. But something what, like that. Something what you're time. signing it is basically, I'm going to give you bread. However, I'm only going to give you this amount that we agreed upon right. for you to play this one thing. Right. Like, what? Bro, and that's it. That's it. What that does is, like I said, if you could literally sell a billion copies, you're not going to get a same more. You're just going to get paid for your time. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, hey, thank you so much for coming out here and playing the pianos. That I needed. And, get, and, and guess what? We agreed to seven hundred dollars for uh, 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 that intermediate period of twelve hours, right. and boom, here's your seven hundred dollars for twelve hours. And I holla at you, bam. Okay, you have no legal recourse to ever come back and be like, well, this, beat. well, this melody, this riff went for X amount, or hey, well, this new rapper it wants to sample that. Now, guess what? You already signed that paperwork. Okay, and that's how the fuck it goes. You shut the fuck up and get the fuck out my office. I can see. That. However. The motherfucker with, with the big name Say the you Prague Or say or the, the me no, In this situation You know what I'm saying We don't right. want to say no names You know what I'm saying and, and, and the way we work it is Guess what We made them play the melody That literally I created By just doing in like Boom 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 right. Like literally I'm telling you like Hey play this And I'm literally saying it with my mouth right. I can't play the keys right. And then you play it Be like no I don't like no 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 On the third key do this because that's where it gets sketchy Because when you're a producer Like a producer is making sure the track Sound crazy Right, right that, That's Khaled, where shit gets get... The Khaled effect uh, The Khaled effect of, uh, of, 2000, of 2010, 2019 uh, I'm trying to it, I'm trying no, to I show understand, I understand what you're saying I understand what they saying. can understand And, 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 I'm, tr- and, I'm, tr- and I'm trying to show the, And I'm trying to show the viewers uh, Right, it's fuckery. It's fuckery. Okay, all right, all right. So let, let's scratch back a little bit because I don't want to get off the. I don't want to like have Khaled take us off course because he takes everybody off course. And I want to go back to Lauren Hill, Whitecliff, Praz, Fuji's. And so you're telling me that Whitecliff did not play the in, any instruments. No, I, I never said that. Okay, what are, what part are you telling me? Are you saying he played only some parts? Like, cause I can the, see. the only part that I was saying was Lauren Hill can't sing for shit live. Okay, one. And on top of that, a, a lot, a lot, a lot of people who have been suing in civil court okay. and have been winning. There's a reason why the songs can't be performed live. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so that's that's from a from part. from a from a legal aspect. I'm not saying he didn't produce nothing. Didn't. Uh, Production is a very big thing. I've I've produced. I've done a lot of things. Like I've went to school for production. I did. You know what I'm saying? Like production is a lot, and it's a very big scope. Now the problem lies in the big names that want to take advantage of that scope. Of course, the I know of for the world. a fact. For a fact, the and I, I really want to say a name. I mean, See, I want to, like like you talk about the runners and and we, and we talk about Wyclef. Like, dog, I got a name bigger than these motherfuckers, and I'm telling you, dog. Right, like, I, no, I can't, I can't say the name, but I'm telling you for a fact, dog. Like, I've been there in the studio with this motherfucker. Like, one of the like uh, only thing I'm gonna no, 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 no. In hip hop, period. Okay. And the only thing I'm gonna say is, at one point, anywhere around 2001. To two thousand to two thousand and eight, he, he was part, he he was charging five hundred racks yeah, every yeah. single beat. A million dollars a beat. That's what I heard. I know exactly what you're talking about. And I'm I'm gonna tell you from first hand experience, dog. Like motherfucker would be in the studio, dog. Well, would be in the piano. studio. Oh no 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 he no he could. He could play like. Oh no oh, oh, no 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 no. That I ain't taking that away from nobody. I'm never gonna take away nobody's skills. At the end of the day, well, no, of course. I've seen him get like, down. I've seen him get down on the piano. No yeah no no He's no. Of course. Five different symphonies. I'm of never. Five different beats. I'm never gonna put nobody down because at the end of the day, remember to get to a certain level, you gotta know certain shit. Because at the end of the day, it, it, dog, it's just like the streets. Nasty. It's just like the streets, though. You gonna get your car pulled. Mm-hmm. However, what I will say is a lot of the like the new sound that was invented and this, this, and that, and the right, third right. and the new record. Be like, damn, he produced. Excuse me, he produced and co-wrote. Oh no, bro! I, I, I was I was in that room writing, right, 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 right. writing these R and B records, dog. Right, right. I was. However, however, dog, I've been there and I watched. Literally, I seen. Li- li- literally, I seen we'll one down. of my dogs. One of my dogs bring a beat. Literally bring a beat. Right. 
put the shit on, and motherfucker just come in the room. He bring his big fat ass in that bitch. Right. And he just bum. He nods. He goes, nah, hold on. I'm going to tweak, tweak, swap, tweak. Swap that drum out. Boom. No, because he don't even touch the code. He be like, hey, swap that drum out and put this. Because, like, they do got the knowledge. Right. And, and then they, they don't got the knowledge. I'm never playing down the knowledge. Right. But what I'm saying is, it's literally just like, hey, swap down that shit. Love that. Boom, 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 boom. All right, now tweak a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And that's what I You want. already know. Right. And that's... And the math. It's not... A, it's, it's so a, where, it's do, where do you... It's completely unfair. no. One would think, but that other producer didn't get would a fee. Think. He he got but, paid a fee, nowhere near to what he should have got. Paid. Not, I, but but not on the credits. Word counts is on the credits. The credits, of course. Writing credit, production credit. You get your, you get your, credit. You get your bread. Right. You get your bread. The gra- that and Grammy that's... nomination, that Grammy award. Your name ain't on it. Your name ain't on it. You don't get the plaque. Right. You don't get the plaque. You get participation trophies. <laughs> <laughs> Not even. You, you don't even get a participation ribbon. Nothing. And that's the thing. At some point, you know what I'm saying? Like, because everybody do it. But at the end of the day, like, you know what I'm saying? Right. I just wanted to. I just wanted to like make it clear to some people because a lot of people aren't in the music industry. A lot of people aren't dealing with the music industry and in, 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 in nowhere even close to its entirety. So sometimes you got to be like, damn. Well, how does a person like Khaled? How does a person like Khaled make so much money or make these albums and get these songs cleared, even if they have multiple artists? And how much, how much of these artists charge him to have them on, or how much of these artists, you know, take on points? You know, if anything, if if anything you heard in the industry, we're just trying to give you a little glimpse or a little explanation to how it really works, because that's really what it comes down to. Sometimes people just don't understand how it works. And there's a lot of industries oh, yeah. that never understand how it works. That's just like, the, like not to even go off topic, but just to give like a little jab at the real estate industry. Like the real estate industry, a real estate agent works for you and is a voluntary service. You can buy a house just like you buy a car. Literally. Yes, there's a lot more paperwork and there's a lot more history behind a house, but it is a voluntary service for someone to buy a house through a real estate agent. You no, 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 correct. But the problem is, the problem is, and, and and this is the biggest problem, like with a lot of shit in the United States, we make it difficult, so complicated through the legal, through Process. the legal, uh, fuck it, fuck it, I'm going to say the legal jargon, right. j- just the way it reads. Like, because at the end of the day, the way that you read all those real estate contracts and other Facts. shit, don't, don't nobody write like that in real life. Facts. Nobody speak like that in real life. Facts. You look at that shit and be like, wait a minute. No, it be looking like you're reading William Shakespeare, bro. And yeah. you look at it like, dog, seriously? And it's for a reason. Right, right, it's right. for a reason, no, dog. That's what I'm saying. Because right. you don't need nobody. It can literally be like, hey, bro, this is my dog. Sam, right. my dog. And Sam, like, hey, dog, I want to bang it. I want to sell this shit. But like, damn, dog, what you want to sell it for? Oh, shit, that's it? Hey, Bro, let's let get it. Right. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right, bye. Let's get it. Bye. Right. I'm going to go to the bank right now. And that's it. And guess that's what? It should have been. And guess what? Be. The, the the buyer saves money. Even the seller saves money because, like, nothing's going There's into, no like, man. no middleman. But the problem is they want to use big words for everything. Right. And this and that. Like, right. they literally no want to pull people terms. out. Yeah, like, no you got to remember. You got to remember, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's in the same ilk. But it's kind of like off topic, but it's kind of like the same thing. Like back in the day, dog, like when it comes to being lawyers and shit like that, like at the end of the day, the you rule of thumb, the, let me, a, at the rule, at the rule of thumb, is, is, you know what? It's called common sense. It's like, yo, dog. Self representation, right, 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 right. If, if, I, if I got somebody saying they saw my dog at the motherfucking airport, right. at the time you said that my dog robbed some, and then that person, Got somebody else that said like, yeah, I saw him. I can never forget him. How right, can I forget him? Right. He was an ugly ass motherfucker. Like, like whatever they said. But you see what I'm saying? You can't, you can't talk cat no more. Right. Like everybody talk about. Excuse me. That's something that gets me. Like, oh my god. Like American politics now is getting so crude and it's getting so this and that. Dog, back in the day, no, dog. You said the jargon is different. Like you said, that was a perfect No, no, word. no, it's the jargon. And, and, and people get mad at Trump and his people for talking the way they talk. But, dog, back in the day, back in the day, literally, you be in the House of Representatives, motherfuckers start talking. This should be looking like what you see like out in Indian shit. Like, motherfuckers be like, hey, man, yo, you a goddamn liar. 
Bam! And you're going to get slapped in your shit. And you might get stopped out on the street by all the other people that are innocent no, seen you do it. No, but think about that. Think about that. Think about that. You wouldn't want to elect a governor that gives so much, that cares so much about his his city and all that shit, that he can man, hey man, I, yo, hey, I fuck with the east side so much, I'm going to start the fuck out of fuck boy with that right. shit. I'll be like, yo, you no. If that was the whole campaign speech, like, hey, vote for me. I'm a slap a fuck nigga. That's like you be like, damn, I'm a vote for the dude. Like, yo, he, he look like he giving like, it real. That's like Gaddafi during his interview. We were actually speaking about this earlier. Don't lie about my city. I'm a slap fire to it. I'm a fucking lying. And, and, and then you on C-SPAN, and then you slap fire. Man, right. you lie, but right. but that's what happened back in the day. No, but let, let's let's break it down for the people that don't know. We were doing a lot of history speaking because. You know, our history is our future, and if you don't understand that, then you're—I promise you—you're gonna be lost in this world. If you don't, you're gonna be lost, and you're gonna be doomed to repeat it. Doomed to repeat it. Thank you for saying that. And and the problem is, on top of that, you know, say if you don't know, you know, say if you don't know your history, you're gonna be doomed to repeat it. However, you're gonna be doomed to repeat it with the outcome of whoever is controlling that history. That's why you need to know your history, and you gotta know what's going on. And so, like, if you don't like history. This segment, I mean, you do what you want with it, but I'm, I, we're going to be dropping knowledge for here for like probably the next 30 minutes. And I know we probably at least 30, 40 minutes in, but this is going to be a very sensitive topic, a very crucial topic that if you don't know your history, you better learn it because it is doomed to repeat itself. And if you are not aware, then you're going to be left in your underwear, motherfucker, because they're going to fuck you. Straight up. They're going to fuck I like, you. I like that wrong. It's going to fuck you, bro. If you're not aware, you're going to be left in your underwear. Facts. Underwear? Under there. Under underwear. There, right. I like that. I like that line. So, so what we were talking about is that, you know, how misrepresentation of governments and misrepresentation of of political power where Muammar Gaddafi, and, and I'm going to let you take it from here yeah. because you know the exact history. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I studied that for a little bit, and uh, you know what I'm saying? i seen it because Muammar Gaddafi, he, he was under pressure with the USA in the 80s. Allegedly, they said there was a plane that came down that was explosive. They blamed it on the Libyans. Richest man in history, by the way. They said, they, they, you know, there was, uh, you know, boom, they blamed it on him, whatever, whatever. Nothing ever happened to him. Now, fast forward a couple years later. He uh, he wanted a satellite for a telecommunication service for the, for his country, Libya, and for North Africa in general. He wanted it. Well, he was paying X amount of millions, tens of millions of dollars a year to borrow off of uh, European satellites and stuff like that. This is the eighties. He wasn't he wasn't allowed uh, he wasn't allowed the loan. Like he had the bread. And all that shit, he wasn't allowed. Uh, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm sorry. He didn't have the bread. He didn't have the bread. What happened was he couldn't get the loan, so he relaxed. He relaxed and he say nothing. Waited ten years later. Ten years later, he got the bread for. Bam! Shot his own satellite up in the air. Now, now he don't need to borrow European wavelengths or nothing like that. Bam! Like he doing the thing, everything like that. You know what I'm saying? Like Libya, one of the countries where it's like there was no water in a specific region. Like, and the aquifers and the water was all on the other side. Like that was the most intricate sewer system to bring the water and like so everybody could have it. Like, in fact, when Muammar Gaddafi was Growing up, they were still nomads in Libya. When Muammar Gaddafi was president, everybody in Libya had a house that was sponsored by the country. And the last people to get a house was actually his own mother and father. Because he was just like, how could I give you a crib? When I run this shit, it's gonna right, look no like it's, yeah. it's gonna look like, man, well, you're my people, so that's why that's why you got it. Right. So it was little shit like that. And then he started asking questions about other shit. Everybody else looking at him like great. Other world leaders at the time. At the UN and stuff like that. And um, what he realized is for what he wanted to get done, it was saying more satellites and things of that nature. What he needed to get done was what he wanted was to establish a gold dinar was the name of the currency. And so with that, it was an African only currency system which was backed by gold now the difference is the united states of america 
See, I don't know about y'all, but like me, I'm a nerd. I collect currency. So like the next podcast, I'm going to bring you a American dollar that is backed by silver. See, the money you got now is not backed by nothing. Backed by paper. It, it, no, it's not backed by nothing. Like <laughs> exactly, exactly. It, you know what it's backed by? Backed by charm because you can wipe your ass with the shit. Right, right. But I, I've got I've got American currency that's actually backed by shit. And the difference is instead of being a hundred percent green, it's like green, but then all the lines and everything else is blue. That means that it was backed by silver. Right, right. So literally, I could go to the bank and be like, hey man. Give me five dollars worth of silver, so, bitch. Right, 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 right. Stat. I right want it now. now. <laughs> I don't trust this paper JG shit. Worth. <laughs> you know? So what he wanted was he wanted to back it up by gold. Right. Now the gold the, rate at the time. The, no, no, but, but by straight gold. Right, right. But remember, the gold rate at the time. But remember, it's Africa. Right. They got the gold. Right. They got the gold. They so when, got the so, gold. When, so when he's talking about it, all the country was just like, damn, hey, that's a good idea. United States. England, like all the world, hey, that's right. a good idea. You're like, nah, yeah, yeah, nah. Hey, let's get in on that shit. Nah, bro. This, it's this, Africa, is, bro. this is this is by Africa, for Africa. It was like FUBU. For us, by us. That's it, bro. Nah, now nah, you gotta make it. Then all of a sudden, he becomes a terrorist. He becomes a terrorist. So allegedly. He, Oh no! It wasn't allegedly. He's dead because he became a terrorist, according to allegedly. Us. That's what I'm saying. Allegedly, by the other nations that felt that his regime was. If that if if that African gold dinar would have took off or some real shit, it would have changed the whole the, the entire world. The, the entire world. Africa, no, right? no, 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 no. The entire world, not just Africa. No, the entire world. Right. Because it would have fucked up placed, the United States. Yeah. It would have fucked up England. And, and where would it you know have been? The pound is fucked up. The euro is fucked up. Right. The dollar is fucked up. Everything right. is fucked up. With the Brexit world. But every, but imagine it on a completely different scale. Right. Even with this cryptocurrency, like cryptocurrency imagine it from that. would be a fluke. And they're still controlling it. Dinaro. And they're still trying to figure out how to own the cryptocurrency. Right, because you So can't. all this shit happened with all this shit. And when everything was happening and they're trying to attack Gaddafi, you know what I'm saying? The leader Gaddafi and all that thing, everything is happening. Like he's having interviews with the BBC from England and all that stuff. Right, right. And he's bringing them outside. He's going out there and you see whatever they're saying is not happening. And, it, and it'd be what he say. He, he'd tell you. He'd be like, hey, everything that they're saying, like, like the United Nations, because there wasn't no country. The people that were attacking Libya was the United Nations Army. What they would do is right, they were right, blow, uh, where they were blowing up their bombs they're at. Wrong. They called something, bro. Yeah, NATO. 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 Where they were blowing up their bombs was right over the the the, the prisons that he had. So, what would happen? You blowing up walls, prisoners walking out, and like what Gaddafi was saying during the interviews, he was like, "Hey man, everybody talking about something. Oh shit, there's a whole lot of terrorism going on now." He said, of course it's going to be terrorism. If I had them locked up, you talk about since September, you know, since 9-11, because this is what he was talking about, Keen. He was like, you talk about 9-11, and you try to find them, you can't find them. The reason why you can't find them is because I got them locked up. Now, all of a sudden, you see him again after you motherfuckers bomb my goddamn shit. What the fuck you think is going on? Right, you fucking my shit up. And what the fuck you think is going on? He said, who is better equipped to deal with these motherfuckers than me? Like, I'm, I'm living here. Right. I know what these motherfuckers is about. I know what these motherfuckers is about. Because at the end of the day, no matter what, no matter what, as bad as he is, what was his religion? Right. No, no. What was his religion? You really don't know because it was never said. It's all image. It's all image. You never know what his real like. Right. Like it wasn't like. I mean, we know what it was. Right. But like, it wasn't really like like all these other motherfuckers that are the terrorists and shit like that. Dog. As soon as he died, what happened? I mean, Libya is completely destroyed. All all, nice. all, the, all those waterways and everything that was transporting water, for from, sure. from, they're gone. Everything is gone. The housing is gone. Everybody had free ha- everybody yeah. had free housing. When you get married, you got fifty thousand dollars to get into to get a career. But all that shit is gone. Medical, medical, all that free medical shit is gone. Everything is gone. I'm saying, these what, are, what are, are you gonna do? That were majorly affected by the American. When you surprise. don't want to, dog. When you don't want to, my dude. It's real simple, dog. At the end of the day, no matter what. As much shit as anybody talking about the U.S. Because it, there is a lot of shit to talk about the U.S. Right. But at the end of the day, dog, we live here, dog. And, and motherfuckers... And, quote, and they dra- no, and guess what, man? Motherfuckers dragging their nuts. Because <laughs> it's real... Dog, it's real simple. As fucked up as it right. is. 
That's fucked up. Dog, no, it's real simple. If you got something I want, and you and you literally a man of principle, you setting up for yourself. You say, nah, I ain't gonna give it to you. No, I'm gonna whoop. I'm gonna whoop the fuck out your ass. If take I know, if you. I know, I'm, right. I'm gonna whoop your ass. I'm gonna take it from you, and then I'm gonna tell everybody else, nah, he was wild. Right. And, and I'm gonna and I'm a convince. Bitch. Right. And I'm gonna convince him that you right. was wild. Right. That's what we do. And that's what America. That's what this country yeah. is. Nobody. Excuse me. Nobody's gonna lie to you better than this country. Facts. You see it with what happened with the unions. And with the establishment of Israel. Now nah, fuck that. That's a whole. That's a whole different conversation. I know, I know, but I'm, but with you, with you, with unions is a little bit more simple. With unions, right? Because it's like we've convinced our own citizens that unions are bad for the workplace. However, police officers got the strongest union. They kill whoever they want, the and they go on vacation, and it's paid right. and everything. That is the craziest thing about this country. Propaganda. No, we've studied. No, we can swing after, after World War Two. There were certain people in the Germ in the Nazi government, and even you know, and, and even the axis of what was it called the, the, that we didn't kill. We didn't kill the smartest motherfuckers From there. Information, right? But we had them. Right. A lot of those Nazis, we hired them, and, and guess what they became? They became CEO of Bayer and Bayer yes. and companies like that. But we didn't kill them. We Albert Einstein them. was kidnapped, not a, not taken for his safety. That is a misrepresentation. He was kidnapped by the U.S. government to work on atomic warfare for the United States rather than the Axis powers. That's how it worked, bro. Don't ever think that this nigga just said, hey, yo, come get me. I'm in danger for my life. No. Germany wasn't going to kill him. You can go watch on National Nat Geo that... Fucking the Albert Einstein genius documentary, you can see that Germany was not bothering him because they knew that he was an asset. They knew that they would need him when the time came for nuclear warfare. The only reason he left because he was being kidnapped by the American society for the purpose of nuclear warfare. Your dog, wh- what are we expecting? We know history. What are we expecting? Oh no! Like what are that's we? My point, what are we expecting from a government? Is what I'm asking because I don't want to say because clearly these millennials don't understand what the fuck are you actually expecting? Right. It's gonna it's gonna be the exact same oh, thing, mu- and it's always gonna be the exact same but thing. But America's always gonna be the muscle of the world governments that we have. America inside. has always been the smartest government ever. Ah no, let me take the. Who, who's smart, who's smarter than America? Nobody. It's not who's smarter smart, than not? Who's smarter than America? China. China figured it out, dog. I mean, like, it was I, simple. Like, I was speaking about this earlier about the communists. They communist, dog. No, they communists. Yeah, but it's not like communists where the difference is over there. You open your mouth on the podcast, they run in your crib, they kill you. Can't nobody say shit because if your old girl say shit, they're gonna kill your right. old girl. The, the, they're gonna kill your the old impending, lady. The impending fear. You got. That's what I'm saying. You got. In America, they make you feel like you got rights because you got rights, but your rights really don't mean shit. Right? But you got rights. So it's a in communist. China, you don't got rights. You open right. your mouth, they gonna kill you. They gonna kill your son. They gonna kill you. Yeah. They gonna kill. That's what I'm saying. We have the that what, we have we the do. smartest government. Yes, but we have the smartest. They government have you as... thinking you got free right. choice, right. but you don't. Right? They don't. And that's the first thing. If you ever get, shit, if you saying. ever get too big, they gonna kill you. That's my but point. But if you keep it within the same level as everybody else, which everybody else, don't nobody else got a problem. Everybody on the internet talks shit about America. Oh, they hate America. Guess what? The way that you're able to say I hate America, you can't say it nowhere else. You'll die. Right. And guess what and else? True. And at the end, a, week, a, a couple of days after Thanksgiving, what you gonna do? You gonna stop hating America, and you gonna go to Walmart, you gonna go to Best Buy, you gonna buy a ninety inch TV for fucking two hundred dollars, and you gonna shut the fuck up again, and you gonna talk shit again for the next three hundred and forty five days. Facts. But That's how you know we live in the smartest and greatest country in the world. Yes, in because that they sense, make you think like you say. Yes, but you ain't. in that sense, and I have to give, I have to give, give it to the United States that yes, the freedom of speech we do abuse it because nowhere else in, in the world can we have the freedom of speech that we have here. You get arrested I in England. You, you get arrested in England for ranking on a nigga on, on Twitter. Right. No, for ranking on a on a regular person on well, Twitter. That's verbal harassment, but we have that same law here. Nah, no, we don't. Yeah, we do have verbal harassment. No, we don't. Verbal no harassment is a charge, bro. Nope. All right. No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you. All right. Salute to that, then. Let's go. 
God bless and bless God. Bless. Hey, no right on this one, we can't agree, so fuck it. No, I'm t- no, ain't no law. No, you, are you tripping? There ain't no law, man. Freedom of speech has already been impeded against. You cannot call the cops because I hurt your feelings. Yeah, you can. People do it all the time. I can barbecue the mall. I cannot I can go to jail outside. for hurting your feelings. I can barbecue outside and you can call the cops and I can go to jail. I cannot hurt your feelings yes, I, and yes, you, you call can. the cops and I go to jail. If, I can't. If I follow you and keep insulting you and stalking you, that's stalking, bro. You add a different shit, dog. If I'm walking behind you and insulting you, I can be charged with stalking. That's completely Never have di- known you. That's completely different than what we were talking about. No, it's not. Because verbal, it's 100% I'm different. I'm talking about verbal harassment. This is like the internet thing that we talked about the other day. And we can get into this right now. Because this actually patterns to the conversation. No, no, it patterns to the conversation. Please, please, please. Like, we both agree that yeah. there is no such thing as cyberbullying. Because, at all, at all. Because you can turn off the computer. You cannot see the comments. Yeah, you cannot can, see... You can close uh, your fucking eyes. Right. Whatever the case may be. You can log out. Log out. That, that's what I was trying to get to. And yes, of course you can. But that's why, even with verbal harassment, which is a charge, you can't exactly just walk away from somebody talking shit about you to you because what if it continues after the verbal assault? It becomes verbal assault, then it becomes stalking, because I'm following you now. I'm following you to either your residence. Bro, let's be realistic, bro. No, nah, fuck that shit. No, nah, no, nah, because you want to be this guy. No, you want to be this guy. No, 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 no. You want to be this guy. Realistically speaking, if a motherfucker talking shit, no, 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 no. If a motherfucker talking shit, and you be like, hey, dog, man, shut the fuck up, and you walk away, really, what are the actual. Percentage probability that a motherfucker gonna follow you. Oh, it, 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 ain't, it ain't big, dog. You, yeah, you ain't never been in Chicago, Jack. Most motherfuckers. <laughs> you, know, you ain't been in Chicago, You talking Jack. about gang, dog. You talking about gang Not members. Right, right bro. And that's you my about point. Gang members. Well, that's Guess my what? point. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? In this country, the laws don't apply to you gangbangers because it's easier for y'all to kill yourselves. As the government would say, fuck y'all niggers. Think about it that you okay. got it, you got it the same. That was a stretch, but okay. Uh, essentially, essentially, no, the government don't give a fuck. When it's gang violence, the government don't care. But my point no, is, the, no, no, the cops only come when it's time to murder somebody who's unarmed. Facts. Guess what? No, no, guess what happened during the Las Vegas? The, the cop just got fired. He got fired. He didn't get paid nothing back because he got scared when the LA when, when the Las Vegas shooter was over there busting. But guess what? No, you know that. Yeah, yeah, but guess what? Yeah. The That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Pissing himself. And guess what, though? Guess what, though? A cop that killed an unarmed motherfucker, black motherfucker like us, dog, guess what happened to him? He get paid $2,500 a month for life because he got home. PTSD. Right. Because he got PTSD. I want to hear that shit, dog. I agree. You want to be a warrior? Hey, hey. If you want to be a warrior, then be a warrior, dog. Don't be a pussy warrior. Hey, no, no, no. I agree. If you want to be a warrior, then be a warrior. Because when you put that badge on, you want to be a warrior. Guess what? When you beating up motherfuckers that's unarmed and shit, oh, you want to be a warrior. So, so guess what? Pussy, yeah, yeah. So guess what? Nah, nah. But guess what? Oh, okay, you want to be a warrior? So guess what? This nigga got the same guns you got, got the same body armor you got, nigga. We got be guns. A warrior, nigga. <laughs> hey, what we talking about? Hey, this is Sparta. Right. You want, hey, you want to be a sparring? Be a sparring. Facts. I don't got time for the bullshit, dog. I, I don't got time for the Athenians. I don't got time for the Arcadians. I, don't got time for the Arcadians. Arcadians. Hey, I agree. You say I agree. You want to be a sparring? Right. Be a sparring, right? Bro. And I agree. And I agree. That stick that. up for motherfuckers, right? right? And I because agree. Because your, jo- your job, is, no, at the end of the day, a po- the only reason, no, and we don't even need police officers, nigga. The only reason we got police officers is we're because. we're not willing to self govern ourselves. Because, no, because you can't. You can't self govern yourself. Because you see it what happens. It's scary, right? No, it's you scary. can't. You can't. Look at Miami. Look at Miami. You can't. And the self governing city in man. You can't. And went to shit. It ain't nothing but Spanish motherfuckers. Everybody there looking at Spanish. It's and guess corruption. what? It's straight corruption. Yeah. Look at Detroit. Straight corruption. Corruption. You can't, you look at, look at, honestly, on some real shit, except for Miami. Look at motherfucking, look at majority, every major city that's Democrat. It's straight corruption. Anything happened. Dog is serious. I'm bad, Trump, nigga. Relax. No, 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 cause we're gonna keep it real. Right. Hey, yeah, you wanna be a spy? Hey, you wanna be a sparring? Oh, I am then a be a Spartan. Don't call me Trump. Be a Spartan. <laughs> Trump ain't Spartan, nigga. He's, like, he's Athenian, bruh. 
You want to talk it out? I mean, I'm good. <laughs> you want to talk it out? You want to walk it out? <laughs> all right, all right, that's, right, that's what you think. <laughs> all right, so look. Trump going. Look, we're going to take we're Trump going to shoot somebody. Oh, facts. But, hey, all right, let's leave on this note. You heard about this Area 51 shit? Yo, I ain't gonna lie. I, I hope. Feel. I hope they rush it. I hope it. Because <laughs> guess really what? Do? I do. Because guess what? Let's guess leave what? on this note, honestly. I, all right, now nah, rush it, rush it. I hope they rush it. Right. You wanna know why? Why? Because they say it's gonna be about 300 pe- 300,000 motherfuckers rushing. I hope they rush it. Because the last motherfuckers that rushed Area 51, you know what happened to them? They, got, they got shot and killed in five seconds. So that means in about. It's three hundred thousand, bro. In about in, in about in about fifteen minutes, Everybody it's, go, it's gonna be a lot of stupid motherfuckers not walking the face of the earth no more. I can't wait. I hope they shoot all y'all dumbass. But you really think you gonna walk into Area Fifty One? Right. So what the aliens at? Right. I mean, what the aliens at? It's a, it's a, it's a crazy. What the aliens at? It's a crazy fucking story, and that's why I. I These are the really same really people that ate Tide Pods, been licking ice cream at soup at, at the supermarkets. Oh my god, spinning no. pickle jars. Oh I'm gonna tell god. you. I'm gonna tell you. Spread up, dog. Kill them all. Facts. Kill them all. I don't want to live with these heathens. Right. They're scrap <laughs> heathens. I'm gonna. T- I'm gonna tell you. Spread up. Hey, man. I ain't going nowhere like a mouse on a sticky trap. 50 black dice roll for your dicky hat. Ooh. You feel me? Shout out my man. Freddie Gibbs? Nah, my man <laughs> Frank Fender. You already know who you is, man. Jersey stand up. Salud. 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 But uh, what, I, what I just want to say is that Area 51 shit is crazy. It's it's ongoing. This is the United States. Th- these niggas really ain't got shit else to do, and this is just what. Of course, they got nothing to do. You gotta remember the next big electronic sale is in November. Facts. They don't got nothing to do. They got nothing to do to November. So this is what you we're can at. only have these problems when you live in literally the great. You gotta understand what yes. they. No matter how bad, no, no matter how bad America is, I'm sorry, not to cut you off, but all I want to say is this: no matter how bad everything is going in this country, and this is not the third, you got to remember one thing: you could walk down the street in this country, you don't got to worry about a motherfucker stabbing you in the neck. You don't. You don't got to worry about a motherfucker shooting you and shit. In America, if you get stabbed in your neck, you did some fuck shit. In America, if you get shot in your shit, it's because you did some fuck shit. Right. Like, it's, ve- it's very hard to just get randomly stabbed in the face in that time. Or shot. That shit don't happen in America. Right. Because motherfuckers in America is worried about different shit. Like, we want a hundred inch TV screens. Like, we, like we're like we very materialistic yeah. driven. Like, like we're materialistic driven. We want to stun on the next motherfucker and we want to fuck the baddest bitch. And that's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, bro. There's a reason why all these motherfuckers keep getting caught at the border, dog. If you get mad about the dog, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't even born in the country. And I'm a guy, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't give a fuck. You can deport all the motherfuckers from Texas right now. I don't give a fuck. Right. I'm a citizen. I became a citizen at, at 18 and a half, 19 years old. I don't give a fuck. I'm good. And I'm about to get deported. That's a whole nother story <laughs> I ain't gonna talk about. But dog, like, dog, I came in the motherfucker. I did my residency. I did all that shit. I did that shit, nigga. I had to learn all that shit. Like, but who was this president? What was this law? You had to learn ridiculous shit. But I did it. At the end of the day, there are laws in place. And I will, and I refuse. My dude, I refuse to let motherfuckers try to come in here and try to circumvent, and no, and try to circumvent the law. I dog, at the end of the day, bro, guess what, dog? If you got a country grass, if you my neighbor and you don't cut your grass, I'm, you know, I'm a holler you, but like, hey, dog, you, yeah. hey, dog, why don't you cut your grass? Look like shit, bro. Right. Some people get mad when you tell them it look like shit. Right. Because some of you motherfuckers are slime balls, lazy, piece of shit motherfuckers that don't deserve nothing in this world. Right. Because it's real simple. Hey, hey, dog, what the fuck? Man, man, your grass look like shit, bro. Like, like, I, I ain't dissing you. I'm just telling you, hey, dog, my grass cut right. and look good. Yeah. Fuck wrong with your grass. Right. I need you in two weeks, homie. And that's the that's the difference between generations. Point blank, period. So if you gotta report them motherfuckers, I don't give a fuck if you gotta report them niggas right, by so age groups, know. by age groups. <laughs> I don't give a fuck if you deport all them niggas by, by 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 eleven months old. Fuck, get them fuck out of here. All right, all right, all right. Fuck that. That's the argument. Now, but now we gonna keep it real. I don't know. Man. You can I, say whatever you want for the audience. No, nigga, no, no, we no, keep no, it no. real. No, I ain't pandering, and so I'm gonna keep it real with you. That's what's up. If that's 
If that's what you feel, I understand with the big yeah. immigration thing. But we're not gonna get into it this episode. Yeah, we're gonna cut all that shit. We're gonna no. I mean, it, no, it, it was good. To, it no, was good. And so we're gonna call it right now. This has been another episode of the Knee Braided Podcast. Yep. Check us out on all social media platforms. Check us out on Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, SoundCloud. Patreon is our biggest platform right now, guys. Go check us out. You can check out all our content. You can subscribe to our channel, YouTube, Facebook. It, we love it. We love the comments. We've been getting a lot of a lot of comments. We've been we've been replying to them all. Keep coming with the comments. If you guys want to see anything specific on our platform, let us know so we can bring you guys this type of entertainment. This has been another episode of the Inebriated Podcast. Thanks for